I will only say that I do not know if human misery can be portrayed with more realism than to see so many people leaving in such confusion with the cries of women and children so burdened by obstacles and difficulties. And truth be told, if these people have sinned, then they are paying for it dearly. Don Juan de Austria, letter of 6 November 1570. Hello, let's continue with the journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Chapter 56 echoes the vision theme via its playful subtitle, Concerning the Gigantic and Never Seen Battle. And in the joust early details, infinite people who were hoping to see the severe and never seen encounter. It is an extension of the Plato's Cave symbolism in the previous chapter. It al it's also important to note that Cervantes frames the combat between Don Quixote and the lackey Dosilos with the official ban on dueling. The duke removes the iron tips of the jousters, lances as a precaution and tells Don Quixote to be satisfied that the duke is even allowing this event. Even though it went against the decree by the Holy Council which prohibits such challenges. Did you know? Cervantes was not a fan of the vulgar masses. Remember that from the nobility's perspective, it's a fallen world. Chivalry's dead on many levels. Similarly, Rocinante is always pathetic. And now Tosilos arrives atop a workhorse from the Low Countries. The mundane detail also refers to the Habsburg's use of Spaniards to repress the region. In the end, Tosilos falls in love with Rodriguez's daughter, who becomes the Lady of His Liberty. Cervantes offers a detailed description of Eros, or love, piercing Tosilos' heart with an arrow. It's comedic, but it's also a Neoplatonic view of the mechanics of love. Quixotic Mission To whom does Don Quixote pledge himself prior to his duel with Tosilos? A. God and man B. Satan and Muhammad C. God and Dulcinea Correct answer, C. God and Dulcinea. More importantly, Tosilos' formal declaration of surrender is an idealistic articulation of how to resolve social and ethnic conflict. I say that I recognize having been defeated and that I wish to marry that lady immediately. I do not want to achieve through disputes and battles what I can achieve peacefully and with no risk of death. This contrasts with the Duke, who at first remained shocked and extremely angry but even the duke is eventually satisfied. Perhaps because, instead of the son of his vassal, a mere lackey will marry Rodriguez's daughter. Three final points. First, Don Quixote's rare religiosity echoes Vivaldi's objections to the heresy of Knight's Errand in chapter 13 of the first part of Don Quixote. Awaiting combat, Don Quixote properly entrusts all of his heart to our Lord God and to his lady Dulcinea of Toboso. Later, he even blesses Tosila's marriages with religious language. Since our Lord God has granted it to you, may Saint Peter bless it for you. Second, the metamorphosis theme reappears. Rodriguez and her daughter object to the transformations of a rich man into a lackey. But Don Quixote and Sancho Panza act as mediators and Rodriguez's daughter is happy in the end. I would rather be the legitimate wife of a lackey than the deceived mistress of a nobleman. Third, all of this religious respect and social cohesion contrasts with the sadistic disappointment of the masses. All proclaimed victory for Don Quixote, and most of them went away sad and melancholy at seeing that the two combatants they had waited for with such anticipation had not hacked one another to bits. Just like when boys are disappointed when the man they are waiting to see hanged does not appear because either the other party or the court has pardoned him. What to do about the masses? Morality is the last thing on their minds. That's all for now. Keep reading, the Stormly only gets better in the coming chapters. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.